Good evening once again, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another segment of virtual Bible study. A chance to study, learn, and reflect. Today, our topic for this continuation of the segments of Encounters with Jesus, we will be looking at Jesus' call to his disciples. We'll be looking at his call to the disciples. And I feel this topic is indeed a very fruitful one and hitting right in line with what the church celebrates today. Today the church acknowledges ember days in which now we reflect upon and pray for the ministries of the church mainly the ordained ministries and of course the ministry done by the laity in hoping that more persons may be drawn to answer the call in which God has placed upon their lives. And so our objectives for today are as follows. First, we will look at the scripture reference. Next, we will look at the background of the text. Then we will get into some idea as to why Jesus called disciples. Why is it that he called the disciples? And of course, now looking at the event, what happened, how the disciples responded. You know, we want to know and look closely at the way in which they responded to this call in which our Lord gave upon them. And lastly, as always, we will look at how does it speak to us today? How does it speak to us today? Our scripture reading is written in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, reading verses 18 through 22. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In looking at the background of this text and looking at the events that led up to where we are in the scripture reference for today, for this segment of Bible study that is, we understand that Jesus has been preparing now for his ministry. And so, as we see Jesus now just coming out of the wilderness, completing, completing his temptations that he would have endured from Satan, now being in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, feeding upon his spirit, and of course, developing this strength in which he needs now to take on all of the things he is about to do and to prepare himself fully for the mission ahead of him. So of course, the idea of fasting and prayer was a key element in how Jesus was able to be strengthened and to be ready for all of the obstacles that came upon him. And so now, as John, as we hear, John has been beheaded. And so now Jesus withdrew from Nazareth and went to Galilee. And here it is now, he starts his ministry. 
And a big thing about this is now Jesus in doing this is fulfilling the prophecies of Isaiah. In looking at what happened, it almost seemed like it was out of the blue. Here it is, Jesus is now walking along the Sea of Galilee. And here it is now, he sees two brothers and he calls them. First he calls Andrew and Simon Peter. And then later he calls James and John. And so one would always have this question. Why is it now that he is calling disciples? And here it is now, we can look at it in maybe three or four explanations as to why he would have called disciples or had disciples. And so firstly, we understand that Jesus, he was a teacher. And so a common thing to be identified as a teacher is that you would have followers or you would have students, or in other words, disciples. And this was a big phenom for the culture where the disciples would always be following their master, trying to learn and digest as much as they can so as to be prepared for what is to come afterwards. And here it is now, Jesus just starting his ministry. He needs to have disciples. And so now Jesus calls these initial four to walk with him. And so as a teacher, you are, you are gaining the credibility of others when they are seeing others follow you. And so this was a big trend, especially in the Greek culture, as we see it in popular figures such as Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, that all of them basically had students that followed them. And these were great philosophers, those persons um, of great wisdom and knowledge. And they started schools. And so Jesus, in a similar fashion, is one with great wisdom, who now is passing this on to others. And so in addition, in looking at what Jesus is doing, he is not only a teacher, but he has a perf purposeful relationship he's trying to establish. And so in essence, he is promoting this new covenant, this new covenant as it is presented in the prophecies of Jeremiah, where he says, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, where I will create a new covenant. And here it is now, Jesus is trying to establish this new covenant by selecting a new set of 12. And so, as we see in our last point, we wonder why was it 12 disciples he chose? And so this relates clearly and more effectually to the idea of originally in the first covenant, Israel was dominated by 12 tribes. And here it is in this new covenant. It is the same concept of 12 being that special number. And now instead of 12 tribes, these are 12 disciples. And as Jesus says, that these 12, these 12 special disciples who followed him will now in their seat in glory, will be looking over, sitting on 12 thrones, now judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And so this concept of how it relates to the new covenant always points to this idea of a new 12 that Jesus is bringing or is raising with him. And now to look at how the disciples responded to the call. It is very much peculiar to see now the disciples upon seeing Jesus, upon hearing him simply calling them, asking them to follow him. It is obvious to see or feel as if there is something greater going on. 
But from the text, we just see it was just simply a question of asking them to follow him. And so we cannot necessarily say that the disciples, those fishermen that Jesus called at this time in this scripture, that they were not well-off persons or they didn't enjoy what they were doing. Because now they were in the trade industry of being fishermen. And so here it is now. It is definitely something special to be doing because you've been taught how to fish and the joy on your face when you see now you've caught so much fish, the chance to make plenty of money. It's very much an, ex it should be a thrilling and more exciting experience. But nevertheless, when looking at what the disciples did, they left everything. They did not hesitate. They just picked up and they chose to follow Jesus, left their boats, left their nets. And one would think now, maybe this business and what they were doing, maybe it was not very lucrative for them to so easily leave. But then again now, when thinking about what they would have been hearing from John, John was the one who was preparing the way of Jesus. And of course, many of those early disciples who Jesus called, they would have been following or closely linked to Paul, um, sorry, closely linked to John. And for this reason, John created a lot of emphasis in understanding that this was the man that you needed to follow. And here it is now when Jesus comes to ask them. I feel that they heeded John's words and they respected what John stood for in understanding now that Jesus was the way the one to follow. And for this reason, they did this without hesitation because now they had no master. John had already been killed. And so when thinking about this call, this call in which the disciples received on that fateful day, one can understand greatly how a lot of it translates and can speak to us today. When thinking of the idea of Christ calling persons, we must realize that he didn't just stop calling persons those 2,000 years ago when he called the disciples, that he is continuously calling us, reaching out to us and trying to get us to follow. And so he definitely understands the purpose for us in his mission, in his objectives and his goals. And so when, when Jesus called the disciples, the same way in which he can call them when they least expect it, is the same way in which now he is calling us here today in ways in which we least expect it. He can be showing us vis visions, putting people in our lives, and of course, all of which now to guide us and thoroughly get us to reflect upon the beauty of what it means now to follow Jesus. And so in addition, we recognize now that the type of persons that Jesus called, because they were not only lowly persons. There were some persons who had decent jobs, some persons who were considered to be um, outright sinners. He called persons like fishermen, tax collectors, and a whole myriad of persons, persons who were considered to be zealots, who were very much interested in this warlike behavior, rising up and destroying Rome. And all of which now, these variety of persons, this diverse group was able now to learn from Jesus and of course become the disciples which we know and reflect upon today. We bask in the works that they did, understanding that they too, just like John, helped prepare the way for new persons to follow and engage themselves becoming faithful disciples of Christ. And so 
what as well we can learn is the fact now that when Jesus calls us, there is always great choices we have to make in addition to great sacrifices. And so looking at the disciples and now they had a business, the idea of selling fish, catching fish, all of which now, this is all they knew. This was their livelihood. And now here it is. They had to make this choice. Right on the spur of the moment, Jesus asked them to follow him, telling them that, they, that he would make them fishers of men. And here it is now, the sacrifice, not knowing what is to come, not knowing how this will end. And of course, not knowing or seeing the rewards in a material way of the benefits of now following Christ. Same goes for us today, that we have great choices to make. Are we now to stop what we were doing to now answer the call? Or maybe the call is to draw us into something what God has truly called for our lives, as opposed to us doing what we feel is best for our lives. And so all of which, when we think about it, is a great choice we have to make. And of course, when we decide to truly follow Jesus, to let his will for our lives be the one that is primary, it always calls for the sacrifices, a change of habit, to let go certain things, all of which now to fully and faithfully be answering this call. I wish... I wish to leave some reflective questions for you today in helping us to determine what it is we have been called for, how we are being called, and ways in which we can answer the call of Christ to being his disciples much better. Firstly, I ask, in what ways do you feel Christ has been calling you? In what ways do you feel as if Christ has been calling you? And lastly, how hard is it to answer the call without hesitation? How hard is it to answer the call without hesitation? Once again, my brothers and sisters, I thank you for tuning in and listening to this segment. Continue to like, subscribe, and share our content with others as we continue to build God's kingdom here in this portion of his vineyard. May God continue to strengthen and bless you as you continue to nourish yourself in the knowledge and wisdom of these scriptures. Amen.